All right, here we are. I know, Tom, I know. Power and speed. <laughs> I know, I know. Power and speed. <laughs> Phone number 908-751-0211. Uh, we will be taking calls at some point tonight, if anybody's actually listening. It's a holiday, you know, kind of weekend day. What is it, 751? 908-751-0211. <laughs> I got to write it down every week. I, I I can't remember. Yeah, we really we won't be screening or anything because the the only qualified call, screen, call yeah. screener we have is sitting there busy surfing on a computer instead of paying attention. Oh, Hi, Tad. How are you? I was looking up the phone numbers. All. Why do you talk so quiet as soon as the fucking thing comes on? I don't know. It's not my. I it, it happens. <laughs> it, it's like somebody <laughs> pushes a fucking mute button on you. What the fuck is wrong with you? Hey, Mike. What's up? Just, Crunch is in the house, by the way. Yeah, Crunch is here. Looking good, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I know good. I can't I can't say it. I'm not even gonna try. Looking I'm, good. I'm tanned. Tanned. The sun tore me up. I wasn't talking about the sun, I was talking <laughs> about the fact that you lost like fourteen pounds. I have a little bet with the barber, so we have to get paid this week. Well, if the barber's listening, he's gonna lose because you're dropping. I mean it was <laughs> noticeable when you walked in. I was like, damn. Wow. What are you gonna are you gonna lose thirty? Yeah, thirty F- fifty nine to twenty nine. Yep. Yeah, I think fifty nine to fifty nine to two twenty nine. Well, I think Tad found it. Dude, Dude, you really you got know. everything on your Facebook is food. <laughs> he texts I, us all day. I, like yeah. pick, today, what was that? Uh, five guys? Five guys, yes. And burp. Oh, uh, man. It, it was that peanut butter milkshake is what did it. And and it's not even like a burger and fries. It's it like seven burgers, eight french fries. You'd sent me a picture of White Castle debris that oh, I that couldn't even different. believe. That was different. You have to do He called it multiples. debris. Yeah. yeah and debris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Debris. And a Sunday and a shake. and <clears throat> no, I just have sweet tea at White Castle. Hey, can I say one thing? Sure. Um, you know, we got to think about our, our military people today, seeing as it's uh, Memorial Day. Absolutely. And shout got, out Shout out to them. Absolutely. I, you, they, they can't be given enough credit. No. They, salute. they really can't. And if anybody's listening and doesn't like our military, shut, shut your computer off. Go outside and stick an ice pick in your, in your eardrum. Yeah, I mean, they really, they should leave the country. Yeah, they should. <laughs> or come here, or come here, and we'll come we'll, here we'll, and we'll, you up. we'll dispatch you yeah. immediately. <laughs> he said, dispatch. What are you trying to say? They're like iPhone people or something? Oh, Lord. I don't Stop even, talking. I don't even that. understand well, well, that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when you get But anyway, that. thanks for your service, everybody. Absolutely. And you know, I, I do things like when people call up and like they're looking for something. And you know, you can tell, you can tell that level of discipline. When you talk to a military person, you can tell. Yeah. Like, you know, like, yes, sir, you know, or, or very sharp responses. They're either military or police. And like, I had a guy that called up and I was talking to him and he, he was actually from New Jersey and um, it was like last week or whatever. And he said something about that he's back here now and he's, he's going to remain in New Jersey. And I was like, oh, where were you? And he's like, oh, I was in Afghanistan. I was like, all right. So when I sent him the invoice to pay, you know, online to, to make the payment for the product he wanted. I took 40% off oh, and he called yeah. back and he's like, that's gotta be wrong. I said, no, it's not dude. Thanks. I mean, he's the reason that we can do this and we that's can right. sell stuff and shop and we can keep being car guys. Yep. Absolutely. Good for you, Mark. Yeah. Proud yeah. of you. Again, I, I try, I try. I'm not, I'm not completely heartless. No, I know. A lot of military that. people are car guys too. Hell yeah. Yeah. They really are. That's true. I mean, I got really? customers in a lot of military areas. They, they love it because the guys, they go away, they, you know, they'll go on tour and they'll send money back. Knowing that when they get, you know, six months in, they get to go home and their car's done. Really? Swear to God. Yep. Uh, yep. You think it's a mechanical thing? Like. Probably. You know, because if you're in the military, obviously it involves guns. Yep. And it involves heavy equipment, you know, uh, tanks. Yep. yep. Boats, ships, whatever. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's, I, I could kind of see that. Yeah. I think boats and ships are the same thing. Yeah, they probably. Well, <laughs> isn't one bigger? <laughs> Just saying. Much. I don't know. I they, they all float. All right, so uh, I guess uh, I don't even want to talk about batteries. I really don't. <laughs> I, what told, I told the people about the spectacular battery you found. So you well, have, I didn't. I didn't you have find to talk it. about that. Actually, Tom brought it up. Tom, All right. well, whoever, somebody has to talk about it. But I found it. People want to know. All right, I knew about it. Here's the deal. I, <laughs> you're going to circle track. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's pain in his eyes already. Yeah. Um, we did practice right? and like anything, would you want to go to the racetrack and be 70 pounds heavier than you have to be? Of, of course not. No. You know, I mean, you want to be at minimum and because we race in this godforsaken 
type of racing. You pick up mud and everything else. So your car ends up heavier than like you ever anticipated at the end. Right. So realistically, we got to lose about 70 pounds. Quickly. Yeah. Okay. As much as I know Brian could lose a few, <laughs> he's okay. losing 70. Um, there's a lot of things that they've made good rules, you know, that you can't do certain things, whether it be for safety or expense. One thing that Tom alerted me to was a battery by a company. I guess it's pronounced Braille. Braille. Yep. Um, they have a lithium ion battery. Mm -hmm. Now I know most of the guys that we race with would not spend the money for this. Maybe some of them would, but it looks to me like in one shot, you could probably take out about 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. In one shot, like by changing one item. Okay. Big question. How much does the battery cost? Well, if we can <laughs> believe our research assistant, Thaddeus, um, <laughs> he managed to find it for a, a bargain price of $1,500. Wow. Yeah. Man. I, mean, I got a part number. I could probably get it cheaper, but that was just off the top of my Google There you search. go, whispering again. You, your voice works, dude. <sighs> <laughs> okay. You, you I don't, found it. You what? don't talk that quiet on the phone. You don't talk that quiet. We're sitting here. You're like. <laughs> well, the phone's right up against my face, so. You know, I don't want to put the Are your headphones too loud or your headphones no. too quiet? Or is your brain just disconnected? Yes. What happens? There we go. Just try to enunciate and speak up. Yes, so, <laughs> so you found it for 1500 Oh, 1500 five or something like that. That You know, that was just a Google pr preliminary search. Now, I'm not 100% positive, but I think the battery that's in the car right now is in the 20s. I, I think it's like 26, some somewhere in that range. So okay. if, if that is what we have, that's a... That's a real benefit considering we were looking at like 20 something hundred dollars in a rear to say five. Five pounds in the rear? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, there's things, there's no bead lock outside back wheels. There's smaller, you know, thickness rear brake rotors, you know, stuff like that. Like it we could go right. faster. Right. Yeah. I mean, we found out we could take like, uh, I think it was like somewhere in the neighborhood of like four to five off each rear brake rotor. Cause we really don't need that much rear brake. So th there are right. some things we can do, but the, the bottom line is, is that the whole reason we're doing this is we decided we're going to run gas. Well, the motor came, it, it was a gas motor. That's okay. what it was. Okay. Th the engine builders will swear to me. They do nothing different for camshaft alcohol versus gasoline. I have a hard time hmm. understanding that. I think that I would want to take advantage of some of the things you could do with alcohol, but what do I know? Okay. I don't know anything. Um, you're an electronic salesman. Yeah. I saw like, I got the battery down to 900 at Red Deal. Do you? Just yeah. a little bit of looking? Yeah, yeah, one look. Good job, Ted. I, man, never mind. No, nah, I don't blame him, man. He looked at one place. Okay. Good job, Ted. Hey. Yeah, good job. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, 900 is still a lot for a battery. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah it me, is. Give me two six, while you're at it. 600 less already, half an hour. But yeah. when you look at like some components that I don't want to really talk about because technically they're quote unquote maybe illegal in <laughs> <a> certain <laughs> But you're talking you, about gray area? Why do you have well, that look in your eye right there? I don't know, because sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures, so we might need to go down that route. But it, okay. it, the, the problem is the, the legality stuff, if everybody else is doing it, I know that's not an answer. Right. I mean, you can't can't be the guy driving down the road going 100 and say, well, the five other people that just passed you, a stupid cop, they were going 100. It's like, yeah, but I stopped you. Right. You know, so you're still. You were the slowest. Yeah. You know, I mean, or last guy in line or whatever. To, whatever it is. Yeah. So. There are some things we could do, but I'd rather not go down that road. Here's another question. How many mm -hmm. other guys might have that battery? What do you think? Well, I can tell you this, that I am probably, I am probably really wrong about my assessment of using gasoline. It's a 75 pound rate weight break. I believe that alcohol versus gasoline on this motor should be worth in the neighborhood of 15 foot pounds of torque. And I would say nothing up high. They, they usually don't pick up power up high. Okay. That, that's, and that's my assessment from everything I've ever because seen. Because of the compression ratio, right? Well, not only that, the compression ratio, these motors are limited. They're 10 and a half to one. Technically 10 and a half to one with an aluminum head. I could run this thing on pump premium. Yep. I, I could and race all night. All right. So, I mean, that's, and you know, you can get into the funny fuels and there, there's other things you could do, but we would be the only person really trying gasoline. Other people have tried it and gone back, but I think that they've, done this because they really can't get their cars light enough. Um, one of the guys that works there knows what everybody weighs because they don't hide it. Like mm -hmm. he didn't give me any trade secret information here, but he said, nobody's come under the scales, even at gasoline under 2,300. We have to be uh, 2,275. Wow. So, I mean, we can, we can come <clears throat> down. 
I guess with 14 to 1 compression up in that area, it's probably worth like 12 to 15 percent in power. Well, uh, we. I mean, that's what it always was. I don't know. You know, with the fuels they have now, like Q, mm-hmm. it may not be that high anymore, but it's got to be 10 percent. But you know what? Those fuels, the, the crazy fuels, they require maintenance and thought on your side like you can't leave it sitting in a tank you know i mean unless q is more stable i mean well, i know q's just ultra oxygenated right but i mean so. we had we had c44 before there was c46 um and i remember laughing because we had a circle track guy there and it was a, a two barrel iron headed motor and it was okay it wasn't a great one and we had had the c44 for testing and we just pumped out the fuel in the dyno and dropped you know a few gallons of that stuff in first hit with the oil not being warmed up it was like 20 better Mm. like wow so we had this drum here just for testing a whole drum and it was expensive so we're opening a drum taking a little opening a drum taking a little all of a sudden we put the fuel on it's not worth anything zero nothing i mean so and then that's when everybody started to realize okay you really got to be so now what are we going to do we're going to run the shit in our circle track car Take it out, put it in metal containers, have it closed up. So like you're putting your fuel in Ziploc bags. Yeah, to, suck to the oxygen out of it. Right. Yeah. It's like a second job. Makes yeah. sense. It makes sense. So I I think that when you have an alcohol motor, and, and we didn't haven't done a lot. You know, we never did. Didn't really mm-hmm. fit in an HRA stuff. But the ones that we did, they were like 17, 18 to 1, you know, because you were taking advantage of what you could do. Sure. So uh, well, I... <laughs> I think it's got to be better. In in drag racing, straight line, 1320 performance, I think a lot of guys would buy that battery. I think so, too. Yeah, especially the guys that they don't have a, a weight rule. Yeah. Or like if you're grudge racing for cash or something. Mm-hmm. You just want to get as light as you can. Yeah, that's that's um that's a big difference in you and your competitor. Yeah, man, if you could pop 20 pounds out of your car that quick, that's pretty badass. Just from the battery that's going to, you need one. So it's gonna be there. Listen, I was I was thinking really <laughs> stupid. Wow. No battery. Um, small rechargeable battery for the MSD box. Start the car with a jump box, send them out there. You know, I mean there's there's things, you know, if you go do that. I just don't know if it, if in the end it's gonna be worth it with gasoline. And I'm not gonna hate on the engine builders that do these things. There's a lot left on the table on these motors. I know there is. And I'm gonna I'm gonna get it and I'll find it. <laughs> Anthony, if he's listening, needs to get my dyno up and running in his place because yeah, that I, might happen. I can't do this, you know, by just saying, oh, I'm going to take a guess. I think that camshaft and that rocker, that's going to work. Why should Brian buy a dyno? 40. 40. Because remember, I, I always tell you, I find myself looking at him. I'm doing it Uh-oh. again. Uh-oh. Doing it again. Now, I, not only did I do it, I called them and talked to him and talked to the guy at Superflow that used to be one of the guys that used to help us. And he remembered and, mm-hmm. you know, he even said, I'll, I'll help you guys out. God, it's been so long. You know I mean? Like my long lost friend. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's 40 with no Lambda channels. And Oof. I think I'd probably want, if you're going to do it, you buy an E-channel. You want everything, yeah. Yeah, you buy an E-channel. But I mean, all the other options they have, don't care. Doesn't, doesn't, wouldn't fit into what I do. Yep. But yeah, then you got to put the spacer box on for starter and everything. It, yeah, it comes up. But it's, you know they bought DTS too. Yeah, their stuff is nice. Always yeah. was. Not required for I what know. I do. Just saying. Are you going to let our listeners know if you buy the battery? Because we want to know what difference it made in the performance of the car. It, that's the other problem. You can't. This look. You go to a drag strip. It's just a wait. You have your weather. Right. You know how fast your car should go. I mean, look at what the pro stock guys do. Right. They can kind of tell you within a hundredth of how fast they're going to go. Yeah. These circle track guys, it's lap after lap, you know, you just, there is no perfect pass. There is no perfect lap. You hit one corner, right? You, you step on your dick, leaving the other corner. I mean, you know, <laughs> it, there's just, there's no way to really quantify what the, what the weight break matters. There's really not. Mike said quantify. Shut up. For all you hillbillies out there. <laughs> now you got all the hillbillies confused. They're all going to Google quantify. <laughs> what is Mike talking about? <laughs> It's K W A K W. How can you quantify having a Braille battery? <laughs> All right, Crunch. So, what did you do this weekend? Um, I went on a road trip. Oof. Went down to MIR Maryland International Raceway. Had a good time. It was a class show mixed mm-hmm. with a grudge grudge event. Mm-hmm. So, for half of the day, it was class cars, top sportsmen, this and that, and then from five to ten. 
was supposed to be all out grudge, which they mixed it up again because the you know the tracks that aren't used to doing the grudging for cash, they never get that part right. Mm-hmm. But um, a lot of racing going on, and you if you remember Gordo that called here that time, yep, mm-hmm. he raced, he beat his opponent, and everything was lovely, but they timed him out. So the class rule on the tree with the seven second time rule was in effect, and it shouldn't have been in effect for a grudge race. So the track made a mistake, but it cost the racer. He had to pay the two thousand dollar. So he got red lighted. Yeah, it red lit him, and he hadn't moved. Oh man! That's and then like when he bullshit. left, he beat the guys, but he beat them bad. That's but he bullshit. lost the money. Oh Gordo, yeah. man, we feel bad for you because yeah, that's Gordo was not happy. Suck. Gordo was not happy. Why do you have to pay? It was I mean, that's a mechanical malfunction of the racing stuff. Well, in the grudge in the grudge world, it is what it is. You get one race to make it happen, and the winner gets paid. You red light, you lose for that particular track. But he didn't. Well, that he 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 paid off. He didn't have a problem with it. He was very good about it because you know you you can argue the fact, but you still look like a sore loser because it could have happened to the other guy and you'd want to get paid. I'd you know? be the yeah. biggest, that, that pissiest crybaby. Yeah, in the you world would. If that happened. It was it was I bad. Would too. It was bad. But what's happening is since grudge racing for cash is so uh, popular right now, all mm-hmm. the tracks are trying to do it, but they don't know the formalities so it it wasn't supposed to be timed out for the seven second rule you know the guy that got the win if he was a stand-up guy wouldn't have taken the money oh man in this game <laughs> if it, if the money can go it's going i hear you i hear you <laughs> That's but, how but that ain't right i yeah, kind it's, of it's i kind right. of agree but you know the by the side the, you know another side of that is that if you know the guy just beat the shit out of you <laughs> even <laughs> even though there wasn't anything wrong then you're just basically not only handing him his money back, you're handing him your money too. So it's one thing being like, all right, look, you, you know, we know that happened, but you know, here's your money back. I'm not going to take your money, but uh, I hurt my car. I can't do it again. You know I mean? That would be the only way out of that because yeah. I got to tell you, if I was on his side and I won even technicality, I'd be like, no, no, no. Right. I'm that Cause now you're not only handing him the money back. You won, you're handing him the money out of your pocket. Right. Yeah. yeah, F that. And you remember uh, Bin Laden that you called in before. Yes, sir. He won his first race real easy, beat the guy. Well, it was a tight race. He spotted the guy, the back tire. So the other guy staged with his back tire. Right. Lights came down, was a head up. It was a close race, tight race. Bin Laden won. Everything was good. They got paid. For some reason, Bin Laden and his camp decided to give the guy the break this time. Oh, no. Instead of the back tire, bad move. It was ugly. Yeah. <laughs> so they learned their lesson with that. That's what he gets for being named Bin Laden. Yeah. The, the, well, he's crazy horse on uh, on Small Block Posse. Oh, I can live with that. The the yeah. break is obviously worth more than the car length. Oh, True indeed. Ton. But, but the guy told him, he, he had one stage right. when he gave the guy the back tire. So right. to give him the break, he could use as many stages as he wanted. But it didn't matter. No, didn't that's matter. that's a chunk. Yeah, yeah. The, break's, the break's big. Yeah. It's got to take you a long time to get down there, don't it? Uh, it took me like four and a half hours. That's a ride. Yep. Yeah. That's a ride. It wasn't bad. You drove your dolly? No, not, um, we took a friend of mine's, uh, Denali. Okay. And my son drove. Yeah. So he, he my, my son is the, he's the designated driver. Since he got his license, that's what we do. The I, I got it. I, I <laughs> got it. I got to ask you. Good. Is the $2 window side bet stuff still happening down there? Oh yeah. Like in the stands and everything? Oh yeah, definitely. Man, I got to get that started at New Egypt. At the racetrack, have all <laughs> the these guys. Track, what, are the, gonna, what are they going to bet on? They could bet on a guy winning a heat race, whatever, you know, like picking the top three or whatever. Oh, yeah, they could. They, I think they're too cheap. No. $2 too, window, they're too cheap? No way. Plus, they'd dude. have to wait to the end of the race for to get paid. Heat race is eight laps. Oh, okay. That's it. It's eight laps, and they run three of them. Mm, okay. Thought that'd be hilarious. So we should go to four of us. We, we should get shirts made, two dollar window, <laughs> and just well, start betting people. Well, I know that they were actually trying to make that like some kind of betting legal at at New Egypt. Like they were trying to get that done. Really, that's amazing. Uh, Brian just sent me. He's listening. I guess he goes two in a break. He's like, no, two running. You know who that was? That, that was yeah. picking on the fireman, Jeff. That's funny. Yeah, I mean the the two dollar window thing. It could work down there. I think it could work, and I think it'd be a lot more fun over a lot of time. I hear you. Yeah, it would be fun once people that many more riots. Riots? They're not. They're not fighting over there. I'm uh, thinking Bridgeport. Sorry. Yeah, Bridgeport's a fighting area. New Egypt's pretty calm. It's not too bad. 
Circle track guys with a two dollar window. Two dollar window. <laughs> Say that again. I, I, I think it would work. I think yeah. it'd be fun. But I know they were trying to get it legalized, like the sports betting side, because really that's a horse race. And then you could be the pioneer that brought it all in. No, they're trying already. I mean, they know, look, how do you, how do you get more people to an event? Either booze Gambling. or gambling. gambling yeah. Or, or naked chicks. Yeah. yeah. But I don't Whatever. think, no, nah, you don't want to see most of the chicks around <clears throat> do we just naked. Negative. <laughs> naked. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> Sorry, but it's just kind of how it goes. He's going to be a popular dude, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I, again, I don't oh, don't, I, don't really I, care. I know you don't. Oh, well, mud wrestling, but <sighs> hey, now. Well, they they actually have mud hops, and they're insanely popular. You know, they they run the trucks through the mud bogs, and they oh that yeah, I've been to that down yeah, there. They saturate the middle of the track, and they get they do better there than you know a lot of times at the regular races because people just pay to drive through a puddle. I I don't understand it, but hey, whatever. Come on, <laughs> we used to way back in the day with that volers and stuff. Remember? Yeah, but we were just kids. Yeah, I mean, we were just driving around, but I wouldn't pay 25 bucks to go drive around in the mud. Whatever blows your hair back. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> a little call back to our friend Alan. <clears throat> so what did you do, Thomas? Um, Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> I worked, man. He That's did, all. I was, yard, I, man. I was around. You mean for the weekend? Or? Yeah. Yeah, nothing. I watched the 600 last night. That was like watching a bridge rust. Yep. Um, And I, yeah, I opened my pool. No car stuff. I know what you should have watched. What's yeah? I know the Paul Newman thing. I know, I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write a note and and do it. No, no, Tad, don't even hit your head. You're just too fucking cheap. <laughs> That's your problem, you cheap fuck. <laughs> I did work on my Camaro a little bit. I uh, adjusted the front coilovers up, trying to get the ride height right. Another Camaro. <laughs> yeah, mine's a convertible. Mine's pretty cool. His is cool. That is pretty cool. But you, you look like you saw a bunch of Camaro somewhere. Oh yeah. Where where am I? I. I I got roped in, not roped in. I shouldn't say roped in. I don't ever do anything. So like, hey, you want to go to a car show? And I'm like, why? And they're like, well, it's a, it's a big car show. It's at the M&M Mars place. It was actually in like an NJ.com. It oh, was, it was at uh, Duke's Estate? I don't know. It's M&M Mars. Yeah. I like the candy. I, I don't know. On that two, way. On 206? No, it was in Hackettstown or something. Okay. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, know, I, <laughs> I know you don't know. just said go that way. Um. I texted him and he's like, well, you guys saw it. Heck, it's time. That's near. Hey, dude, you're Island, out. You're a recluse. Island Dragway. Is that where? Was uh, that Yeah, kind of that way. Island's farther, but. Yeah, it was getting a little weird. It's possible. Yeah. <laughs> um, People playing banjos and shit. Not quite that bad, but I got the feeling if I went the other direction for a little while, it would have gotten that bad. Because oh, then yeah. it's going towards like Blairstown and everything. And I think that's kind of sketchy. Actually, Blairstown <laughs> is not. Blairstown is rich. and Really? Yeah. Uh, I know some screwballs from Blairstown. Blair Academy's up there. What's that? It's a really high end private school. Okay. Like ultra high end. Girl school? No. <laughs> Just asking. No. Just asking. That's a legitimate question, I guess. But I, I got to tell you, there's a million freaking Camaros. Just one after the other. And I mean, you know, look, I can certainly appreciate a Camaro. I certainly, you know, 60s Camaro. Right. Beautiful cars. Um, millions Tom. of them. Tom has one. Tom have has one. one. You have one. Um, millions of them. Did they look good? Some. Okay. Uh, I mean. How many of them were that dark green color? Um, I, I probably four or five. Yeah, there's a, that's always a high percentage. Cause people, they think if they paint that color, they're going to be the only one that has that color. And that's what they all do. Wrong. Yeah. That's why mine is Acura Pearl White. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that, that I have to say was bothersome. And I mean, I haven't been to car shows. I don't, I don't do that. You know, I don't, I don't right. care. Like, okay. just like I don't go to the racetrack for not racing. I don't care. Um, why is it that it's okay to buy a Corvette or a Camaro brand new from the factory or a Mustang or a Mustang, make sure it's clean and now go to a car show. It's the same. If you wanted to look at a Corvette, go to a dealer and have a guy open the hood. That's exactly what you're looking at. So a car show at every dealer. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're like oh, nothing. Concept. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of them were, were tweaked or had something a little done to them, but like what? Uh, the dumb shit. Like one guy put, I don't know why this guy did this. And if he's listening, I doubt he's listening, <laughs> but I hate on him. Um, like 2012 area Camaro. I mean, a Corvette flamed up like with a sixties flame job Oof. looked ridiculous. Yes. It like out of oh, place, ridiculous. Wow. And he's sitting there, he's got his lawn chair and I'm sure he had a Corvette sneakers and hat and everything on. The, the nicest Corvette I saw there was in a parking lot. It was a white Z07. 
you know, brand new 2015, you know. So not in the car show parking lot. No, he was in a regular parking lot. Parking yeah. Lot. Yeah. Some yeah. Because he was, he was probably walking around the car. Oh, yeah. Wow. Looking at the cars. Yeah. He was wow. probably looking at it and saying, well, well yeah, I'm going to go look at some cool cars. You got a better one in a parking yeah. lot. Next thing you know, yeah. judges are around his car. Well, Mike, you want me to spin this? I can spin this and, and make you understand why the guy with the flames on his Corvette spin it, bro. was happy. Okay. Because each car has a story. You never know what that guy went through in his life. He probably grew up and couldn't wait to get that car. And it's the dream car. He put the dream flames on it. And now he's a happy man. Oh, I'm sure he was happy. He looked quite happy to be sitting there talking to everybody. I mean, I was going to ask him, why he did you do that? that? The, he put that in the right yeah, perspective. He I, I used to watch Javelin drivers and wonder, <laughs> what the hell would somebody want a Javelin? And they're smiling. Because <laughs> they, they want one. They couldn't afford an AMS. Beats me. Beats me. I, <laughs> there, there, were, there were a lot of interesting things there. And I, I told Tad, and I'm not any good at this old shit. So if somebody, you know, wants to hate on me, that's fine. I don't care. But there was what I would tell you, I'm sure I looked at the thing. It was a 35 Chevy, which uh, I'm, I'm pretty 35? sure. I'm pretty sure that's what it said. I'm, it wasn't a Ford. I think it was a Chevy. That's right. a shocker not being a Ford. And it had a, you know, chopped down roof, the body work and work in the thing was immaculate. I mean, and it, you know, I'm not a Chrome guy. Right. Never been a Chrome guy. Don't like Chrome. I mean, okay, if you're going to have Chrome on the wheels, that's fine, but everything else. So like all headlight bezels, everything is body color. It was very monochromatic. Perfect. Um, the front fascia, like where you would have like a, you know, an old time bumper was like a nice air dam. Like that obviously was made to do this. Okay. I mean, maybe it's something you could buy. Did you take pictures of it? <sighs> no. Figures. You know why I didn't take pictures of it? Cause is he, the, is he new? Cause well, <laughs> Well, cause we're, cause we're a podcast. No, I didn't take pictures of it cause the guy was standing there talking to people and they were all people standing around. And honestly, I wanted to get up and down the aisles as fast as I could to get the fuck out of there. I had already seen everything. <laughs> all the Camaros. Yeah. Look, I yeah. walked through. Well, I, there is one more unique thing. Uh Oh, here we go. Tom, this will interest you since you are now among the minivan driving population. I swear. Wait I'm, a minute. I'm, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I got a loner minivan. For quite some time, I think uh, that's not. That I think you matter. traded it in. I think it's you got, traded the Super. Yeah, I did not trade anything. Oh, that's, not, that's not yours. I thought that was yours. Hell no! Thanks, Crunch. <laughs> I, I uh, all right, thanks, man. I'm saying you're a pretty, you know, sporty guy. I didn't know uh, you didn't hear this. I told Tom this, but you got to believe me on this. This is crazy. I'm sure they're Honda. What are they? Odysseys, Pilots, Odyssey, Odyssey. Yeah. Okay. So we walk down the aisle mm -hmm. and. The most interesting car there that you don't see every day. I was hoping to see some things like McLarens or Lamborghinis. The only thing there was, there was a Ferrari uh, 458. That's oh, a nice car. Beautiful a, car. It's a big money car. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful car. Very different. And I take that back. I think there was a Ferrari. It might've been a 430. Is there a 430? Yeah. Okay. One of them too. But a 58 is like a million dollar car. No, I don't think they're that much. I think they are. I don't think so. Uh, is it a new one? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I thought you meant like an old, like a. An older isn't that what yeah. they had a 458 that's the new one yeah that, it's stradali or whatever isn't it 458 stradali mm. english dad uh, sorry it's <laughs> italian you're, you're italian you should understand it forget, <laughs> forget I, about it <laughs> it's a four, it's a, right it's right a 458 forget about it yeah, there right. we go <laughs> so i mean walk down that aisle came up the other aisle in camaro alley old camaro alley because there's two camaro alleys yeah the, the, you've got the modern camaro alley where everybody just bought a brand new camaro and pulled into the car show and I okay. specifically like the guy that his main detail to his car was the Camaros have like this ring that lights up around the headlights. Oh, okay. So he's got this multicolored ring. It's sitting there changing colors. Oh my God. I'm like, that's fantastic. Give him the award. <laughs> um, oh. That gets looks at the malls. It's ridiculous. And oh yeah, one guy did have a Camaro with a Knight Rider thing uh -huh. and I didn't even have the heart to oh. tell him. I don't think that was a Camaro. I think that was Trans a Firebird yeah. or Trans Am. Dummy, yeah. Dummies. He had that? Yeah, for real. Well, it fl flashing back and forth, like because the Camaro has like a little slit, like in the grill. Like did, if you look, did you yeah. feel like you lost like five seconds of your life when you <laughs> were never that? get back? Well, I never get it. back. I did go right past those cars, okay. but then when we were walking up the other side, that's when I looked at that thirty-five Chevy, and I was like, "Man, that is beautiful." And there was a bunch of people standing around it, so I really couldn't get a picture. And then I looked straight ahead up the aisle, and I'm like, "It must be a car dealer or something." I couldn't figure out what it was because they were minivans. There were four of them. Maybe five. They all had their hoods open. They're I mean, all Hondas. Crickets. Listen, I swear to God, you want to talk about stifled men? 
like whose wives own their balls. These guys oh. were there <laughs> with minivans, right? Detailed like a mirror under. The, I mean, these are Hondas, dude. Soccer moms, soccer mom vans, M- minivans. And there's guys at the end of the aisle, there had to be four or five of them. I swear to God, if you look at NJ.com, maybe they got pictures of them. And I mean, and you know, there's guys that are showing off the interiors, you know, they got, <laughs> <laughs> listen, I'm, t- I, I have to agree with you. I stopped and I looked and I said, that can't be legitimate. It, it but it was, it was. Did they have music in them? Interiors redone? Some guys, like you know, had like some better video systems. Or Carol or car seat. Crunch, it's a fucking minivan, dude. <laughs> One guy had a Recaro baby seat. But the, the good thing, you see, you know, I, I try to bring the positive out of everything. Uh-huh. The yeah. good thing about most car guys is you never know why somebody likes something. You know what the positive of that would be? What would that it? someday the guy gets divorced and gets his balls back <laughs> and can buy a Corvette, a, a, a Corvette and then park Ooh. in the other aisle, move up. Because there wasn't a twin turbo Odyssey there, I don't think. No. Well, you couldn't see. He didn't have the hood up. But. Wow. Out of all the stuff at the car show that I saw that I wasn't particularly enthused at, I, I had to go up to the condos today because the, Brian needed to do some work on one of his, and I, I've got one I got rented, and the girl's going to move in. So uh, I'm on my way back here. Brian's going to come here. We're going to come work on the race car. Cody was following us, or you know, going to be there shortly thereafter. And I said, I'm going to swing in a White Castle and get a soda. So I turn into White Castle and I look up and I'm like, because they have soda, too, good soda. They have good soda. They do, actually, yeah. By the way. Tad will agree. Yes. And he is a foodie. As Oh, yes, I am. Yes. Okay. Very good soda. All right. It's, I think it has something to do with the crushed ice. I haven't dove into that fully yet. Don't anyway. Ask, don't ask Crunch. It's a, it's yeah. a different a horrible thing. I'm on a diet this week, so this is not a good soda <laughs> conversation. So I, I pull in and as I'm driving in the, in through the Walmart parking lot, I look up and see this kind of like burnt orange, you know, early sixties Chevy two. Right. And I'm like, wow. I was like, that is fucking neat. And the nice thing, because of where it was elevation wise, you could look under it and see it had a big tire. Okay. So I'm like, Ooh. So I pull up around the guy stand, sitting in it. Excuse me. I got the hiccups. The guy sitting in it. I drive around the backside of it. Now I see there's wheelie bars. Wow. Not only are there bars, the wheelie bars have been used. Like you can see, they've been on the ground. This wasn't some guy put wheelie bars on the look cool and mounted above the wheelie bars was a chute. And this is on the street. Yeah. So I pull up next to him and right. I'm like, that is a beautiful fucking car. And I said, can I take a couple pictures of it? And the guy's like, sure. He's like, let me get out. So now I'm looking at the car and I look at the one side, there's a, you know, fender well exhaust, one big exhaust. I walk over to the other side and I said, uh, single turbo. And he stopped and looked at me like, what? I said, single turbo car? He's like, yeah. I said, we got one exhaust pipe. And he goes, wow, you're not the regular guy to ask about this car. You know, so we started talking. Now, this is where mm-hmm. it gets really funny. I'm going to put pictures of the car up because it's beautiful. It is yeah, a nice it's car. Really he's nice looking car. Yeah, I saw the pictures. Yeah. I saw that. Ass. Lexan windows. I mean, this is the, re- and he's driving it. Now, I would have told you they were slicks, but I've been informed that because I'm next to a fossil that the, the street radials look like slicks that okay. you couldn't really tell right. that they're street tires. Okay. So I, I guy goes and he opens a hood because now he knows I know a little something about this. He opens a hood up. What does the fucking valve cover say? The, the Soma racing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, get the oh, fuck out of here. Man. And I said, yeah, I know Anthony really, really well. I said, I knew Anthony before he was Anthony, you know, and he was a guy just playing. I said, that's, that's amazing. And then we started talking. Thing goes in the sevens. Wow. In the sevens, dude. Mm. I mean, it's a nice car. Like everything is done right. You can see that everything about it's right. And I know Tom is like, well, I'd like to see it going to seven. I got to tell you, it looked pretty legit. And Anthony, when I called him, he says, Mike, he's like the first time he brought it there with the small turbo, it went like 860. Mm. Like, so it's, it's I'm right there. I would say it's not possible. I didn't say it's not You're possible. hating on a guy. I did not. I think it's a great car. But the guy's name, I believe it was Ronnie. I probably should have got his last name, but it. I can't, I can't remember it, but what a beautiful car. You need an assistant wow. or something. Somebody could take your pictures, get all your information. Go on Facebook for <laughs> you. Yeah, get, get your soda. Retrieve my phone from the windowsill. Whatever. Uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tad, by the uh, way, uh, 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 speaking of, <laughs> what did you, you dispatched him before. Yeah, right? yeah dispatched. Um, are you going to talk tonight? I did, didn't I? What? I just spoke. Well, 
Well, you you actually have something that I was interested in, and I've I've thought about it for a, a long time. Why, Jello wrestling? No, not no. See, <laughs> oh. We can't even get into Tad's quirks at, at this point between the strippers and heroin girls and mm. all the other crap. Holy smokes! Oh, he's but seven. there's a correlation in car guy stuff and chicks. Though. I don't know because I don't I don't, I don't not go those chicks go go bars and not the chicks that Tad usually shows me pictures. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, he, he's seven shades of fucking crazy, let me tell you. Okay. But the one thing that he found is the ECU. Yeah, you know, the MSD ECU that it's actually mounted on the intake manifold now instead of having to run wires through the firewall. And it's self-learning, which I always thought they should have, but never got into the programming, the base, anything like that. And Mike was a programmer. I brought it up with him and he's like, there's no way. You know, a factory ECU is the most powerful ECU out there. They couldn't have built it. It's not, not going to be there. I talked to Tom about it and he's like, yeah, that's it. They, they're self-learning now. It's, you don't even need a tuner basically. Well, who did MSD buy? Did they buy EFI technologies? Isn't that who they bought? That I don't know. I don't know, but I know Holly's had their kind of self-learning deal for a while. And Ford Motor Company stuff is pretty self-learning. The Mustang stuff is pretty damn self-learning from what I understand. But aren't they mass air metered? Um, I don't think they're mass. I, yeah, I don't either. They used to be. Used I mean, to, yeah, God, I, that's well, what mine is, but well, mine's everything, everything was, but I think it's, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to talk like an idiot, but I thought it was all speed density now. It, it might very well yeah. be. And wide bands. And My Corvette is mass, I think. Yes, it is. Is it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Now I'm wondering. Is it? <laughs> I think it is. It's a, it's a better way to do it. I mean, you're measuring the air into the motor. Well, you, you know, actually, no, it's, uh, the tuners say it's not a better way to do it. Why? Um, I don't know why. It's an easier way to do it, certainly, because there's less parameters for change. But I don't know. I'm not an expert tuner. I'm not even a. We had junior here. A, we could ask. Amateur but. tuner. Yeah, we could. So I mean, did they get into any details on this thing? They just like, no, kind of plug it in and set was, base parameters and go drive around. Yeah, it was a TV show. So they're putting it on the car. They're putting the engine in a uh, earlier car, a late model motor, an LS motor. Right. He's like, we put it in. We just feed it the dimensions for the motor. What we wanted to do, you got to just drive it around and let it self learn. And I was just like, but that, wow. I, I want one, you know? Well, I, I think the processing power should have come far enough that that would be possible. I mean, years ago, like with the early DFI stuff, you couldn't do that. It, right. It did what it did, and that right. was it. Right. But even they said way back when that our cars had more processing power than the freaking moon landing. Yeah. You know, and you're like, wow, and you don't realize how little it is anyway. So, well, I mean, I think they're really only advanced stuff that there is right now or, or one of the better ones is the GM one, isn't it? Yeah. Like what's in yeah, mine? It's bad. Yep. I don't even know if mine is considered the one. I think it was probably the ZR1 type one. I no, think that I was th- a different I generation. Think no, I think yours is. I think most of the Corvette stuff is and and all the high-end Camaro stuff. Because mm. uh, I know there's some marine guys that buy them and put them in offshore race boats because they're really durable. They have a lot of maps and the resolution is really high. I even saw the guys they put them in outboard motors. The LS V8s, the, the motor is like thirteen or $15,000. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. But On top of an outboard? Yes. Well, they they pop an LS1 on top of an outboard. Sitting crankshaft down on an outboard. Yes. I believe that. Really? It, they're, no, they're not cheap in any way, shape, or form, but they're wow. very powerful. I mean, you can get a Honda VTEC, you know, V6 outboard. And a jet ski. I don't say jet ski. Well, that sorry. Con, that yes, con, uh, that conjures. Uh, the, the chair has like got me. <laughs> <laughs> He just did that. So, so my we're, apologies. We're, we're getting a lesson here in uh, modern technology. Then I don't know about a lesson because I mean, I'm when it comes to the electronic stuff, I'm a fossil. I don't know. I mean, Tom and Tom and Tad probably have more information about this because I haven't touched. I mean, look, we branched off into the circle track area, and they don't use a computer except to go online and look at race results. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's it. Well, you and I tuned my SP2, tuned the DFI, and knew nothing about it. Think that, about when that worked. That was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, I mean, that was 06. Yeah. So that's 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago. Yeah. I mean, but, I was. Well, yeah, but I mean. Y- 10 years you, you of technology. It. Oh, it's, it, it exponentially got better. Yeah. For sure. Well, I wish I had a camera back then to show, prove to people that fuel injection didn't make that much more horsepower than carburetor. Uh, we, we've had that discussion yeah. a million times. I mean, yes, they can be cleaner and yes, they can be nicer, but if you've got a fuel injected car that picks up a ton over a carburetor, that means a carburetor is something wrong bad. in the first place. Yeah. Right. I mean, well, the only thing is you could run away, you could, you could run more air through an injected motor. Like if you got a mo, if you have a big motor, like a, a big small block and you have a 1050 carburetor on it, you get to a point where you can't pull enough signal to make the carburetor work. 
where there's no signal required for a uh, um, a throttle body. Oh yeah, that's a huge advantage. And the same thing with with throttle angle versus size of blade. I mean, there's so much you can do because you don't rely on that signal mixing the air and fuel. I mean, but that's where you can make power. Yeah, that's the the carburetor I just bought. I should send it back. Get fourteen hundred CFM. Get a Predator. No, you should go to Anthony. Anthony DeSoma, DeSoma Racing Engines, and get him to put a hair dryer and a, <laughs> and a computer in there, yeah. like the guy with the Nova. There you go. You'll be in the sevens, too. <laughs> that, um, without sure. NOS. Mm. Without mm-hmm. NOS, yes, Todd. And that's the other thing, Anthony and I, when I called him, we were talking about, I said, how does that thing drive? I said, the guy said it drives pretty good. And it started right up. I, I left. He let you hear it and everything? Well, I was sitting next to him because I was busy texting you guys. I'm trying to fucking attach all the pictures, and I hear his fuel pumps come on. And I'm like, oh, he's starting it up. And yeah, he fired it up, and it started right up. It idled. Wow. I mean, it was fine. Yeah, I mean, that's the magic of a turbo. Mm-hmm. You don't need any kind of crazy cam. or Yeah. So I asked Anthony, I said, how hard is it to spool, you know, a single like that? And he's like, it's really not bad. And he's like, and then when we when we did the pro mod, when we could use nitrous, he's like, it was like mm-hmm. a three and a half second spool time. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you just hit it with a little bit and you know, it'll spool nine tenths. Yep. He's like, so for a street car, do whatever you want. Yep. He's like, it's a, and, and the guy was funny. He did say that he's got guys with motorcycles that fuck with him. And he's like, he'll just put eight cars on them and shut down. And they're like, what the fuck? You know, cause <laughs> you just, you wouldn't expect that. No. Oh, uh, what terrible. a beautiful, if that guy ever listens, he actually, he's uh he lives sort of more this direction. Than, than like kind of where he was. But you got no information on him, can't even get a hold of him. No. No, I mean, we can get, we can get in touch with Anthony. Anthony will know how to get in touch with him. That's true. If we really wanted to have him on here, what's he going to do? Say, yeah, Mike's right, my car's nice. <laughs> I mean. True. All right, I take it back. Wow. I want to see some more pictures of it. Yeah, we'll put them on. I want to see the He'll interior. I, you know, I didn't really even look inside. No. Tell you what a dick I am. I was just, I was mostly looking at all the motor stuff. Oh, and Like me, you or me. <laughs> Engine, what, uh, uh, now hair dryer, this thing's got to make power and that's it. The one picture that's so nice that shows how nice a job he did. By the way, he made everything. Really? Like the headers he did himself, everything okay, he so did he's himself. He's a fabricator himself. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. Um, the, the cross member or like the radiator, radiator support, support yeah. has a nice fucking hoop in it bent so that the turbocharger's got a nice unobstructed view of like the front of the grill. I Not mean, he, nice. Yeah, he did. He did. Looks cool. Guy does some killer work. Okay. I would like to see the car in person. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't, I would never ask him to drive down my driveway. No. Ooh. <laughs> well, yeah, Corvette makes it, so. Yeah, next but time, I, next time he's hanging out in uh, Walmart. Yeah, but he lives here. <laughs> yeah, he's I got have, no choice. I have no choice. I happen to see the Corvette was looking pretty clean when I drove up, too. Just yeah, I've to washed it like seven times. Because, yeah. like, you go down the driveway and it picks up dirt, and then you go to a car wash, and then you drive around, and you come back, it's full of bugs, and you say, okay, next time I go out, wash it again, repeat, and it just doesn't <laughs> stop. Why don't you get it, um, uh, wrapped in the front, a clear wrap. I'd like to get it crushed by a track hoe. Or that. <laughs> One or the other. Oh, man. Well, I was amazed at the four-door craze at the tracks. So many four-door cars now, drag racing. Yep. I just wanted to bring it up and let you guys know. The My four doors are at the track. I thought, I thought that was because there's less and less two doors available now, so they have to go and... Get a cheaper four door. Bingo. Like, like what kind of cars? I think um, Malibu not, or anything. I or? guess they're Malibu. Yeah. Oh yeah, that stuff. Four doors. I mean, caged up. Six thirty twos. Ugly. I, I mean, s- you know, for me, it's an ugly car. <laughs> but these guys are out here racing them. I saw one on uh, Malibu dot com or whatever. I was in English Town. The four doors pulling up to the line. I was like, oh, I got to see this thing. And the guy just put a new motor in. A shot with a nitrous stage. So it was too bad. Lifted it up. The back wheels came off the ground. Hit the ground. I thought he hit the wall, but I got found him in the pits. He didn't hit the wall. It's on my YouTube channel. No sleep at all. This insane launch. You just have to see it to believe it. It's a four door. Four door Malibu. Wow. And it was real. Pe- he bought it off somebody else that was uh, on one of the premier guys on Malibu dot com or G Body dot. I can't remember which site yeah. it was off of. Why don't, why don't you plug your websites, Tad, so we can keep you in White Castles uh, and, and fast guess, food uh, until you just pop? Well, like either tech. have <laughs> no sleep at all dot com, all one word barnfindnation.com or like I said on YouTube it's no sleep at all all one word you, you know no YouTube backslash no sleep at all I do believe you can get to it but <laughs> how about one friggin dollar dot com <laughs> I could I see if that's available <laughs> it's not because I own it oh never mind <clears throat> I'll get it dot net then shameless we'll plugs no well I mean Tad's been here a while now and he pointed out that we probably have to change the front of the 
of the landing page for the podcast, the one that's generated by the podcast host, because it does reference Alan, um, hmm. who I did speak to. And, uh, you know, maybe at some point we'll be graced with his presence. Okay. Um, it's my buddy. I believe the swing set has been completed. completed. Oh, so the swing set update, uh, I unfortunately lost cause I was going with a date in June. I, I don't barely. Know. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's been completed for a little bit now. It has. I think it's a couple of weeks anyway. Mm, my, my last video didn't have this, the slide, so it wasn't completely finished. The, was the slide rejected from an engineering standpoint? No, I think he didn't put the mulch down in that section yet. Yeah, that was but like the two mulch, weeks ago. He probably got it done. I would the mulch so. on the plastic, which you didn't think was the correct pla correct base to put it on. So I think it was only fair that we give, you know, Tad his moment in the sun, so to speak, to, to plug his, his websites. Cause well, he, yeah. Well, he, and he could change the landing page. What landing page? The one that says Alan. Uh, it's on our, I don't know if no, he can't change I, that. I went to a vet at things. I wouldn't let me edit. On the, on the on Facebook your page, you can, but the, the podcast stuff, you can't. You know, uh, I, I handle all the web hosts. Page. No, I remember when uh, they I had me try to change the Facebook page. I couldn't edit it either. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure all it right. out. We'll figure it out. We'll he didn't give you the somewhere. power yet. No. No. <laughs> but the only person that gets to the host, the, the hosting stuff is me because I don't want anything to get fucked up. Right. What, what setting is he at? Like Girl Scout? I don't know. Probably. I don't know. <laughs> He might be. Um, <laughs> want to buy some cookies? Hey now. Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> Man, Ted, I, I wish uh, people could just understand just how many levels of fucked up you are. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping it comes out because really you're presenting yourself as kind of reasonable, but just nobody would understand it. <laughs> He's not reasonable? Well, well, that I'm selling cookies, but. <laughs> now, see, this is what I mean. It, it, we can't, you got to well, keep. Well, speaking of the Girl Scout cookies, I do like the peanut butter ones. <laughs> I'm telling you, the orange box. Well, you shouldn't even be talking so. about it. I can you, eat like four boxes in one sitting. You've got your diet See? going good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like them coconut ones, the Samoas. You uh, know, you guys are always the ones that tell me the conversation drifts away from cars. <laughs> it's food. It's the next best <laughs> well, thing. we're all car guys, though, so we can talk about cookies. And we can talk about wives, divorces, why they want us to get rid of the cars. We can talk about anything. Mike, your wife always comes that? back to the cars. No, I don't seem to have no. that issue. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably never going to get married myself. Uh, yeah, I don't have that issue, Tom. Tom's Tom, wife is Tom. pretty supportive. Yeah. Yeah. She, she don't care that you've got your Subaru? car toys or anything like that. No. Or, Does she even, nice. or a Subaru that's not right. No, he's got a minivan now, so it fits right in. <laughs> Does, like, I'm going to strike you. Dude. <laughs> Does she even question the whereabouts of the Subaru, or is she apprised? No, it doesn't even care. Doesn't care. <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Oh, that's, pretty, that's rare, though. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. She's pretty good. She's got her own things. You know, she... She's a big girl. What does she drive? Uh, a Toyota 4Runner. Oh. Not a minivan. I was waiting for a Supra <laughs> no, or something no, like that, but. Close. You've got the minivan. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, when is your Subaru coming back? Uh, it's going to be either this week or the beginning of next week for sure, because i got a Subaru show in Connecticut um, next weekend, two weekends from now. So it's definitely going to be done. Now, did they find out what actually failed on it yet? No, no. not yet. So Mo is the motor out? It'll be the way out. The motor's out. Uh, they were supposed to take it take it apart last Friday, but it's just, you know, they're helping me out. They're doing me a favor, so I can't really press them. All he knew is it had to be done before June 8th, so. Do you have a whole nother motor to go in here, or is this one getting fixed? No, we're going to fix it. You're going to fix it? Yeah. I think it's spun a rod bearing. Hmm? I, I mean, I'm looking at the calendar here. That's a pretty... Yeah they, fast fix. yeah, they just haven't done it. I mean, they have money work in there that has to get done. No, no, no. I hear you. But I mean, if you're talking about the 8th of June, yeah, that's not that far away. No, it's a, but it's a quick fix. I mean, well, I think Tom's got the stuff in stock. So. Yeah. We're going to put a crank in it, set of rods and done. Yeah. I guess that's true. It didn't disconnect or anything. It just, no, 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 no. Just no. make a noise. Made noise, shut it off and they picked it up. All right. New heads and everything. Well, or, good, good luck on it. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what it needs. Clean everything I'm out. I'm not sure. All right. So Ted, I just sent you a text. Uh, mm -hmm. speaking of Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Completely off the rails. Whoa. No, no. Some of the things that aren't said on the show. How about that? Yeah. 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 So what else? Uh, I wanted to tell everybody about this, um, this Tesla S. Electric. Zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. Yeah, they're badass, I think. 1320 and a quarter mile, 1170 electric car. They really go 1170? Yeah. 1170. 
I, I've told the story before. That one that was in front of me at the traffic light by McDonald's right. on 202. Right. Right. Uh, he was right in front of me. Right. And I'm like, oh, look, a Tesla. And I'm like, just looking at the back of it and just right. gone. Yeah. And I'm like, what uh, the fuck just happened? Not, not, a, sound. Sound. Yeah. not a sound. I'm yeah. just I'm just wondering how would this change in uh, the future? Like, what will be the future for our kids or, the, or 25 years from now with the electric cars? It's coming. It's here. Well, as batteries get better, yep. I guess yeah. it, it is. It scares me, as a matter of fact, to well, have Te- that many batteries in you. Tesla's supposed to be real big on the batteries, too. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's that's what holds all this back. It's it's range, it's recharge time, and performance. So performance with most electric cars suffer because they don't want you to have to drive 20 feet and charge up, you right. know, so they they limit what it could do. So it, it's all battery technology. When the battery technology evolves, I mean, look, we've all seen, like, stuck in a YouTube loop, like looking at, you know, electric golf carts that are just retarded, you know, pulling the wheels up and just, you yep. know, insanely fast. Yep. Right, right. So, I mean, it's, it's just a matter of making it more practical. And I got to tell you, as you know, I, people probably aren't going to understand this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, the, the fuel prices coming down actually hurt development, all that. Yeah, it hurt does. Yeah. People don't, a lot of people don't realize it. Like everybody looks at, oh, the gas prices are down. Well, yeah, they're down, but then all the development, it's not as urgent anymore. You know what I mean? Look, if we were going to run out of oxygen tomorrow, they'd be making new fucking oxygen right now. You know what I mean? There's, they, they'd find a way. They'd maybe. be draining the ocean. Yeah, they'd be and doing whatever atoms, whatever it took. Well, Audi right. would be doing it because you saw they have uh, Audi made a car that can run off water now. Yes. So, Dude, Delphi did that in the, in the early 90s. Well, Audi caught up, so. Yeah. A matter of fact, <laughs> when I was on my way here, an Audi R8 following me until I made the turn. Following you? Yeah. He might want to, he wanted well, to race. I don't think so, but I was looking at my rearview mirror. I was like, what, that, what's with that Audi? It looks low and wide. And when I made the left-hand turn, I stopped and went by. I was like, oh, I was you know, R8. maybe, maybe it was an eight thing. He wanted to join the eight club because you're driving your Mark eight. Uh, you know, R8. <laughs> there we go. We got to start a club. Well, you're the Mike idiot. could be in the cl- club because he's got a well, V eight. You're the Crunch idiot. could be in the club. I mean, Tad's the one that told me the other day. Well, you know, the reason that Ford made this, uh, this Lincoln. And I was like, no, why? And he's like, to compete against Corvette. And I'm like, what? The, the, the first year of it is supposed to be they brought it out with the V8 and they were supposed, one of the road and track tests or car and drive or something, one of them picked the Mark 8 over the Corvette in performance. Did you fall and, down? Uh, no. <laughs> Again. No, I, I'm on the Lincoln boards and they, they brought it up. I was like, ah, no kidding. But it's the first year Mark 8, the 93, which had the most aggressive tune on the ECU, blah, blah, blah. And, and it's a, it's a four me, seat bro. luxury car and you actually compared it to a Corvette. Yep. Well, you know, you can't say that because the Cadillac like CTSV. It's not compared to a Corvette. That'll eat a Corvette, man. Well, the CTSV is was basically a Corvette with four doors back in 04, 05. Well, now they got the coupe, so <laughs> the CTSV coupe. Yeah, it looks like a moon car. Anyway, back to Crunch's electric stuff before we go down yeah, the retard cool. highway with these two. <laughs> yeah, well, we've been. Yeah. I'm just amazed that I wouldn't do it. You know? I, I don't. Wouldn't do it. I saw a Fisker in Dubai. That's the same thing. They went, I think they went out of business. Yeah. Yeah. But they were pretty badass too. There yeah. was one at the Wawa by me. And that Fisker. was a beautiful really? car. They are really nice cars. Yeah. wonder where that one's from, from around here. I don't know, but everybody was there taking pictures of it. So I'm like, what the fuck is that? I mean, I had never heard of a Fisker until I saw the back yeah. of the car. I'm like, huh, yeah. okay. Didn't know it was you know, electric. J- Justin Bieber had a chrome one. Uh, I saw Probably what destroyed Fisker. Scares me that you knew that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. One. Scares me that I know it too. Dad, you're a strange dude, man. Just the shit Listen, that rattles around in that fucking head. I don't head. sleep. I watch too much TV in the middle of the night. Things get compartmentalized in places that they shouldn't be. Probably. I mean, I, what, how on earth? Never, I can't even, I can't even start with him. I can't. This is like going to the circle track. For <laughs> That's what this is like. I think Tad's awesome, actually. Yeah. You should see the Lincoln. We're going to put pictures of his Lincoln. Oh, God. The wheels. All right, are we going to have it in low position or high position? Or low. No, I haven't, oh, I haven't can, got that yet. Got to be in low. You can adjust it? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm getting it so I can slam it and taking the rims off, having them, having uh, Richie's going to strip them and recoat them with a, a it's a black, coat, black with a, it's almost a like a car. candy. It's a luxury car, right? Yeah, well, I guess. Is it going to be shiny black? Because it looks like you uh, put uh, that spray paint on, whatever it's No, the, the, the uh, dip shit, whatever. No, it's that? not, that's not the dip crap. Dip what shit. What is it? Dip perfect. That fit rather well. What's it called? It, plastic it dip, dip. Yeah. plastic okay. dip. Yeah. Now, here's another question, fellas. What do you think about the flat black craze that's going on? It's right by my my house. The dip uh, dip shop. What on cars? 
Yeah, like that, that the flat black look. You, you know, know, on some cars it looks cool. The uh, Batmobile that Mike I saw. Know, it's a little bit too much for me now. I don't like flat black wheels. Um, when I was in Dubai, I saw a, a, a Porsche Panamera. Oh, you like them. Yeah, I like that. I might have said this already. They so. grew on me. Yeah, it was covered in felt, like velvet. Uh huh. I've seen that in so, New so, York. So it was flat, but it was fuzzy. It was bizarre. <laughs> so you know, I don't. That's Mike, like, Mike's looking at me like it's like sixties like, thing. He wants to kill yeah, me. like a sixties. I guess thing. I don't. Who knows? Velvet car yeah. cover. I know. I remember you telling me yeah, about that. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I I think I kind of like the flat black thing. I like the idea that you know the the problem is is that I would look at it, it's like oh look that got a little fucked up. You know, just yeah, that. Yeah. But I mean, I'm sure that people that are painting something flat black have probably done a nice flat yeah, black yeah. paint job. Yeah. By the way, not that I want to give any props to Street Outlaws because I don't. Mm. But um, have you seen the the crow? The, what's his name? The the chief. Big chief. The chief with the white. Yeah, he painted it white. Oh, did he got it yeah. painted? Fucking car is badass. Man. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it really is. Oh. That car is really nice. Oh, really okay. nice. We had to check that out. Yeah, he painted it white. And he's got GTO Judge. Um, and carbon fiber, isn't it? In car- stripes. Yeah, the GTO Judge stripes in carbon fiber. And where it says the judge, mm-hmm. he's got the crow in that same font in carbon fiber. It's That car's badass. No, it's, I mean, honestly, a lot of the cars in there are beautiful. It's just the whole premise of the show just became so stupid. And he got beat um, yeah. by a guy from Louisiana. Really? Yeah, for 15 grand. Was that a Nova or no? What beat no, it was a late Mal Camaro. And will you please try to tie up Mike Marillo so we can get these guys talking about stuff? Yeah. You really put that on your little pad there on your little list. I've tried. <laughs> well, I know he got back in touch, yeah. Yeah, one time. And then I don't know what happened from there. Listen, if you want, I can get Alan to reach out because he can there make these connections. Yeah, maybe my timing's off. Maybe it's got to be like 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, if you want the flat black or anything, the, the dip shop's right down the street from me. Yeah. Doing the course. He's got, he had a Ferrari F40 out there. It's got a Batmobile out there now. I particularly everything. don't like that. And I see guys buy a brand new shiny car. And, and flat, flat black, black them, yeah. But you know what? He's actually got. That's amazing to me. He's got shiny dips. He's got shiny a black, flat yeah, black? Yeah. Uh, uh, he had a BMW, new BMW, f- completely shiny. He's like, this has got the gloss coat on it. I was like, no kidding. And he paints them? Yeah. Or, yeah see, well, dips them. He wraps them. Yeah, no. Well, I don't know what the term is right now. but Yeah, they're wraps. Yeah. Because you can get the wraps in anything. Like the, the, the chrome stuff is real big. Like the Lambos, uh, I'm going to Dallas in two weeks to that text invitational and there's a whole, there's a whole group the of multicolored wraps. Yeah. There's a whole group of chrome Lambos, like blue chrome and red chrome and right. chrome chrome. Well, he, he can do that. He can do it. He's got a printer that can do a, any picture you want and put it on your car, but he's uh, mostly spraying on a dip. So what it's would you, just, if you could put, could put a picture of anyone on your car, what would you put? Oh, I already have it on mine. I could put it on power and speed. It's a pickup truck. And it's got a woman tied up, all bound and gagged, in the back of a pickup truck on the tailgate. So when you pull it behind it, you're like, "Oh, wow!" Well, yeah, until you realize that it's a tailgate picture. Okay, and I was just gonna make good. funny of it. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I, I could see that. I could see pulling up next to him, and be like, "There's a bitch fucking tied down in the back of that truck." And then <laughs> entering strange. Yeah, yeah, we are. We are. <laughs> but if, if you saw it, you wouldn't think so. You'd be like, "That's awesome! I gotta get a truck to do that." I hope my grandmother's not listening. <laughs> Me too. If she is, why is she listening to us? <laughs> She might be a what car, were you gonna say? Car, car lady. I really don't remember. Shit. It was going to be good, too, because you sat up and got into that. Yeah, you were about to say something. Uh, but I think we were running out of time, right? Yeah, we're we're about done with an hour. Yeah. Meandering. And like I don't think there are a couple people listening, but like I said, today's a bad day. People are either yeah. either still at a picnic or, or a party or whatever. We should ask everybody if, if there's a different time that's better. Yeah, I mean, that, that's something if they could go on Facebook or write something, I mean, it would be beneficial, you know, to let us know. Yeah. But I mean, you know, the problem is it's timing for everybody. I mean, to do something, like what's going to happen is, is I'll, I'll be at that godforsaken shithole, you know, yeah. circle track racing. So yeah. that's kind of out. <laughs> um, Mike, that's hot. What? That, that tailgate thing with the woman tied up. All right, well, maybe if Ted wants to put that on a uh, Facebook actually, page, on. he wants to see if he can actually contribute to something in text other than food <sighs> And that doesn't mean we condone tying a woman up and putting her in the back of the pickup truck. Let's save. Yeah. Just just trying to help out over here before Ted gets us, <laughs> gets us yeah. uh, torn up with the, was it yeah. FCDD or FDC? Mm-hmm. Some or kind of letters. Federal FCC. people yeah. are. <laughs> people in flatback cars will be yeah. outside the driveway waiting for us. <laughs> So, I mean, timing, I'm going to be, I'm going to be at that stupid circle track, you know, and that, that is a day long event because inevitably 
I, I'm the guy would like the car in a trailer Thursday night. You know, I don't, I don't want to have to think about it. I don't want to have to, you know, worry about how we're going to get there Saturday morning. I yep. want everything done. Yep. Never happens. Of course. Not. We'll end up loading the car Saturday morning and it's scrambling around that. I forget this. Did we do this? Did we do that? So pretty much my whole Saturday's screwed. Um, Sundays would probably work for me, but I think there's, you know, times that people are going to end up at a racetrack on Sunday. Right. Or I mean, church. Or church. You or know, both. I mean, um, well, day or night. That's the <laughs> question, though. Well, I mean, during the day, you can yeah. forget it because, I mean, you don't really have a job. You sort of work for your brother, the horseshoe guy. I work out of state, so I got a long commute, so it's fun enough. You really, dude, you work in Easton. It's yeah. like 26 miles. If I'm that. It's like 26 or 28 miles. But it makes the, job, from my house. makes the job seem more important when you say I work out of state. Yeah. It's 38 miles from my house to the shop, so. Is it really? Yeah. It sucks. Can't you make horseshoes closer? Well, I don't know what horseshoes have all to right, do with the right. price of bananas floating <laughs> in the ocean. Just Tad, Tad works for his brother who's a blacksmith, not to be confused with the horseshoe guy. A farrier. Farrier. He gets very offended by that. Farrier. Yeah. So I don't know. Let us he, know. I think he's in farrier. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> God, uh, let us know if there's if there's a better day. But I I think that you know I, I mean Tom, you have a day that works better for you. No, no, okay. no. I just want more people to listen, call in, and and make fun of Tad Crunch. Uh-huh. Your your or me. time is yeah, kind of yeah, Monday seems to be the best for me. All right, all right. Well, so. f- fuck them people then. Well, no, let's tell say them, tell them listen <laughs> Monday. I mean, like I said, the way most of these things work is that people don't really listen live. You yeah, know, the, the live is something right. that we do to try to give people the opportunity to know what we're talking about yeah. so they can call in. And yeah. we're going to be so hot, it's, it's not going to matter. Yeah, there's going to be so many people calling. Right. Yeah. Not going to be able to handle it. Yeah, we're killing it. We're killing it everywhere we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We are killing it. All right. Well, don't forget to stop by Dumbass Tad's webpages, barnfinenation.com and no sleep, no sleep at all. Or other. Com. All one word. Oh, my God. What? All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Later.